already gotten lucky. These deer that, that we just showed you out there come in from straight downwind to the north of us. And we were hoping that we'd catch everything coming out right here. Uh, I don't know how they didn't wind us, but they didn't. So we're set up, hopefully catch them coming up through the timber here and then out into the alfalfa. But uh, if we can get lucky enough and have them not wind us, that'd be perfectly fine with me, so. Fingers crossed. Drilled him, Mac. He's down. We got us a beautiful South Dakota buck. Oh, absolutely incredible. Beautiful deer, too. Nice nine pointer. <laughs> I see him laying right there. I mean, he did not go 10 yards. Oh man, look at that. What a buck. Oh, is he massive. Look at that. Oh, oh is he heavy. Oh, would you look at this. This was a week's worth of frustration setting up with the wind switching and oh boy was it fun though. We saw all kinds of bucks saw some great deer and actually this is the one that we were after this is actually when i shot him to be honest with you i thought it was another deer i thought it was a nine i didn't look at him that close i just knew he was a shooter and uh this is the buck that we had seen that uh had 12 points just oh an incredible and look at the mass on this deer just big old four or five or six year old buck i mean he's just a big mature animal today what I want to talk to you about is I'm going to show you something that uh, to be honest with you this is all new to us too but boy does it work hunting out of a ground blind for whitetails um, this has been a situation where it's been tough for us to find trees in the right spots but what we have figured out is if we use an evergreen tree and then cut lots of evergreen limbs to brush the blind in with not only has it concealed the blind we've gotten away with some incredible stuff. I mean, we've had deer this close to the blind right here and them not see us in there. But the evergreens and the blind itself have really helped us with our scent. Um, basically, what we've done that's worked really well is to find a spot where there's already a pre-existing evergreen tree. Cut some limbs out of it, slide the blind in as close as you can get it to the tree, as you can see like we did right here. And then take uh, limbs off of another evergreen. It takes lots of brush. You don't want to, you know, with turkeys, it doesn't matter, but with deer, you got to really brush it in. Then take and completely surround and break up the top of the blind with evergreen limbs like we've done up here. We've just taken a lot of different limbs and throwed them up on top, let them hang over, brush it all the way in, and then when you get in your blind, then you can go to cutting little lanes and stuff so that you can see. We don't like filming through the net and, and uh, for that reason, a lot of guys, if you're hunting by yourself, you can shoot through the net and it won't affect your flight of your arrow at all. But for filming, and I like uh, having the net down in this new, or in the net up in this new matrix, you can just slide 
the openings in there. Come on in here and I'll show you what, what it looks like for us. With this matrix, obviously after you get the deal zipped up here, the beauty part of this matrix is you can slide up and down the window all the way around. So what we do is we just bring it in a sliver and then get plenty of brush all the way around and it'll actually break up this black hole effect, so to speak. If you have a spot where you can't get in a tree or if you have a spot that uh, you could actually see better from the ground and the wind has been swirly, the double bowl is an excellent tool to put you in the right spot and uh, boy has it worked on this trip. If you've never done it from the ground, uh, there's nothing more exciting than having a big butt close. Give it a try.